Okay guys, thanks for hanging in with us. So we got the car in, we got the engine out, got it cleaned up, and now we have to come up with our plan. So what is the strategy? What is the things that we have to do in order to prepare this car to make sure it can handle the horsepower and the torque that this electric motor is gonna put out? So listen in on our planning session today and and maybe comment below if you have any ideas on what we can do to maybe improve this car and make it better. Um, but uh, listen to the process and, and some of the things and some of the difficult decisions you have to make if you're gonna be considering converting your car or your muscle car to EVs. So um, a way we could save money in the back is not to go to a four leaf, just leave a leaf spring in the rear end, right? So that would be a, that would save us a lot of money. You know, we would still need to do some stuff, you know, leaf spring shocks, that kind of stuff. So we'd still have a couple hundred dollars invested in in that, but we could probably find a rear end off of a Mustang, like a V8 Mustang with the right gear ratio and the leaf springs and everything to just pop it back on. And that would, that would probably cost us, you know, maybe- Let me get my list. 1800. I already have that on my list. It's on your list? Yeah, it's on my list. It's not on my list to do, it's on my list of shit we need. Well, let me put it on my list of research. Okay, yeah. So, a rear end with a V8, a V8, a V8, a rear end that came out of a V8, because it's gonna have the higher gear ratio. What, what would be the ultimate gear ratio for if we did a front motor? Well, I don't know four gear ratios, but something probably around a 340 to a 370. Is it bigger or smaller? Because you're going to create increase the diameter. You want bigger for more horsepower and torque. Right, right. And so this is two point this is two point eight. What's in yeah. there now? Yeah, so it's low, and which well, means it rotates 2.8 times for every one turn of the wheel. So if you go bigger diameter, it's going to rotate fewer times. In addition to that, that rear end is designed to meet up with this transmission and engine, yeah. and that will last up a lot with an electric motor. Right. Yeah, with all the torque. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have a choice in that, but. Okay, so what I hear is we've made our first decision, no Tesla rear end, and motor up front. That's the... <laughs> that's awesome. Dude, that's the name of the car. High voltage. High voltage. <laughs> um, so we made our first decision. No Tesla I rear end. We just made two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> made two decisions. No Tesla rear end and uh, motor in, in, in the engine bay. Now the next decision we have to make is, and we, we might need to make some more research on this, is direct drive versus transmission. And then if we do transmission, then we have to determine what transmission specifically, right? Like. Are we doing a three-speed out of a V8? Because I found a three-speed off of a six-banger like that for three hundred dollars. Yeah, but is it going to be? Is it going to be strong enough? Shit, a freaking three-speed out of a V8 might not be strong enough. I mean, because we could spend five grand on a transmission. I mean, we could spend a lot of money on this shit. What would, well, so the advantages of doing the three speed is, is RPMs to that, right? Well, the direct reverse. drive we have. So you get reverse with a trans, with a manual. How do you get reverse with a direct drive? Uh, well, direct, you have to make sure that your motor has a reverse capability and that you would put a reverse switch that would reverse the polarity of the way the electricity is flowing through the motor. So it'd be switched. So it'd be switched. Now, here's the funny part about a direct drive with reverse is you could go 60 miles an hour in reverse. That's smart. <laughs> a little scary.
<laughs> which I think would be awesome. I want to go to good guys. Win a drag race in reverse. I want to go to good guys in the track and do it in reverse. Hire a professional driver and be like, okay, you're going to run the course in reverse. That would be so sick. I would say, I, I would say transmission mostly because of familiarity. Yeah. And, and so the three, three speed, it's, it's the same size transmission as this. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, I mean, it's going to it's it's cool. use the same mounting brackets, it's going to fit in the same space. Mm -hmm. And so, so the question then is like you said, whether, whether or not it'll put up the torque. And, and so. Well, it would probably burn the clutch faster than we waste the transmission. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. But. Yeah. So, so you would. So you're gonna have this. You're gonna have a clutch in here. So there'd be a little bit of difference in the the depth of the clutch. Then you're gonna have a mounting plate that's gonna mount between the clutch and the electric motor. Which so that will have to get machined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then you're gonna have you know. 13 to 14 inches of electric motor. So you're actually getting back you know, an extra foot in space. Plus the radiator. Can you shut that furnace off? So Plus the radiator. Because killing our audio. And that gives you the capability, having that much space gives you the capability that if you wanted to do a dual motor, if you found out that the, the first one that we put in was not did not have the horsepower we were looking for, you can put a dual uh, second motor in line. Did you hear that? And you'd still have enough room for, for a dual in line motor or a double motor. Which we're still trying to figure out what the benefit is of a, a dual motor versus just a larger motor. Right. You know, because it might, it might, there might be a torque difference. Or, uh, yeah. or RPM difference, like maybe dual motors get too hot or something. I mean, who knows? So there's some research that we got to do. Battery drain. Battery drain. Battery drain would be yeah a big a big piece of it. Yeah. Okay, so we made decision number two: transmission. I agree with the transmission. I think being having the ability to put it in reverse manage the speed. I think it's a lot more safe. I think it's more familiar for most people. So I think that's a good, I think that's a good move. Th that means we're going to need a set of clutch pedals. I mean, the whole thing, the linkage, you know, so we're modifying. This was an automatic, so. Yep. This is good yeah, B roll of Pat do, thinking. We'll do a, we'll do a, we'll just do a pedal, like a whole pedal setup. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I, and I think we all watched that video of those guys with the, the Porsche that they did in Austin, Texas. It's a little white Porsche. And he was saying you could shift without the clutch. Now, I don't know why, but he said you don't need to use the clutch. That's interesting. I know. So well, we might want to. When you stop, you don't need to put the clutch in because the motor's not spinning. Ah, uh, maybe that's what he meant. But you couldn't shift when you were in motion without putting the clutch in, could you? I don't know. He said something. If you want, I'll look up for that video again. But he said something about the electric motor sequential. Yeah. But he was like, you don't need to, he said, I remember watching the video and they're driving the car around. He says, you don't need to use the clutch. Which, how weird is that? Just be driving and you just, I don't know why. Um, okay, so decision number three, front end. So I, I think the easiest, most economical front end is off a of Mustang 2. It's a Mustang II already made conversion. It comes with, the, the Mustang II conversion comes with the coilovers, the upper and lower control arms, the brakes, the calipers. Um, it's a full setup 
Um, it has a small subframe that fits between, and then it allows you to remove these shock mounts because they're, they're not required to be in the way anymore. And it's like, the basic conversion is like 1400 and it could go up to like 1700 bucks. And it's the whole setup. Mm, no more than that. No, I just looked at it last night. Let me show you. See if it's on the, I'm not sure if it's on here. Here you go. This is a company that, this is all they do. So look at that, 1037, and it's that full system. Now you can upgrade it, so we would still be at probably 1400. That's a cool call. Not for Mustang. Right. So I'm not saying that we order this today, but I think like looking at, I'm just looking for that doesn't easy have steering components. It does. No, it does. does. It yeah, it's got the steering. Rack and pinion. Yeah. I don't think it's a. Uh, it's right on the back side of it, right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is literally... Yeah, okay. Yeah, and it comes with that subframe. It comes with this little subframe connector and coilovers. I'm sure it's not a high-quality system. Like, I'm sure this is, like, you know, cheap as you can get. Right. Well, let's find a good system, but... Yeah. Yeah, look at that one's only 1200 um, the thing I like about this is it's coilovers. Right. Like, and look how compact it is. Look how it all just fits right. It literally just fits right in that area right there. Super tight. So, I, I'm not hung up on it. I just think what I like about it is every, the sub, you bolt, you, you, you set the subframe on there, you weld it up, and then everything bolts to that subframe. Is this the same one? Yeah, they've got like 12 different kits, but it's the same company for sure. And these guys, you can call them, like they're, like if you go into their thing. No, I think that, the I mean, I think the Mustang 2 setup is absolutely the way to go in any Mustang. Yeah. So, so the cool thing about that, like if we, if we, We've got to kind of do that before we can build the mount for the motor because we can't have the motor hitting the steering rack. Right. <laughs> right. So. Right. Rear, driver, forecast, running suspension. The other good yeah, thing. Yeah, so we need the shock tower delete and yeah. the whole front end setup. You, that company has the shock tower delete as an option. To add to the mm -hmm. kit? Yeah, it's like 75 bucks. Because all it is yeah, is this. No, it's, it's just an insert. Yeah. The oh, guard's so about full. To completely replace the fender walls. To clean them up. These are brand new. I know, they don't, they don't have a bit stamp on them. Oh, yeah. There should be a stamp. Well, it's brand new to right here. You can see where he... Yeah. And when you get um, in on the other side and look at it in the mm -hmm. wheel well, it looks brand new. Well, maybe maybe we don't, okay, so maybe we don't put the sub panel in here, but maybe we just put a skin over, over it so it's just smooth. So we don't actually replace this, but we just skin it. You know, so you, you just can't tell. That oh, should be able to take hours. The other good thing about the Mustang 2 front end is once we determine that, we will know what our our uh, wheel lug nuts are. Well, we can, I, I'm sure we can tell them what we want our lug nut pattern to be. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you're right. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's it, right, Dan? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh. The one thing on the rear end that we need to determine is um, the, the one thing we got to determine on the rear end is is there a benefit to have a posi or an open or a lock differential? Okay, we'll um, um, we can always change later. Like, it's not the end of the world because we can swap out the center. Well, that's a good question with the electric 
engine. I mean, I know with a gas engine, I don't want anything to lock rear end. Yep. Can you do yep. that research, Dan? Can you call somebody and find out about on a conversion what kind of rear end you want, an open or a posi or a locked? Okay. Right? Yep. Because that's going to help us determine what type of rear end you're shopping for or we're shopping for. Let me write it. And hey, if you're enjoying this, do me a favor and hit the like button and hit subscribe because that's gonna help us get the word out to other people that are like us, that are trying to figure out how to convert their old muscle cars to electric because we think that this is gonna be something in the future when you go to car shows and stuff, you're gonna see a whole electric section, LS section, big block section, and we just think cars are cool. We don't care like what they're run on. We don't care if they run on cat pee. We think they're cool. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and keep watching our videos.